Hey everybody, Andrew here. Um, a couple of days ago I did a video on the Aspire Nautilus, which is this here. And at the time I said uh, that basically the coils would be very, very difficult to rebuild. Um, and I think they cost about 250 each, something like that. Um, but of course, Rip Trippers, the king of coils, uh, has come up with a way of coiling it and basically what he does is he puts a micro coil into it a micro coil with cotton now as it stands at the moment This is a bottom dual coil. So within the actual um, coil head there are two coils that cross like that one at the bottom one at the top and The way he's actually rebuilding it is he's taking those two coils out and then putting in a single coil and a single coil with cotton so uh, what I want to do in this video is basically recreate what he's done or see how it will work for me. Uh, as I say, no credit to me on this. This is all Rip Trippers uh, and you should watch his videos. He does fantastic coiling videos for sub-ohm coils, for K-funds, all manner of different types. You know, so well worth, well worth watching. So I'll put the link to his uh, reviews in my description if you don't know him already. So full credit on this to Rip Trippers. So, Let's get started. So what we're going to need for this uh, little build is some 0.32 Cantal, which is um, 28 gauge, 28 AWG, but uh, 0.32 uh, millimeter Cantal, some cotton, tweezers, little screwdriver. This one here is a, it's about two mils is the actual. Uh, width of this here which you can um, we're going to be wrapping the, the uh, wire around that and then of course uh, one of these as well which is an aspire head so um, let's go down close and uh, we'll start the process and we see how we get on here's the uh, coil this is a new one this is a 1.8 coil here and um, if you look on the inside you can see the two um, coils uh, one on the top, one below it at right angles to it. Now if you look to the sides of those, you can see that the um, wick is actually pushing into a little slot on either side. And then between that slot uh, and the edge is a filler material. So essentially what's happening is those wicks are sort of almost, if you like, being held in place by those um, you know, little slots but they are touching onto the wicking material at the side which is going to be fed by the little holes at the side here you can see the wicking material through it so essentially what we need to do is to start off is we need to take these out both of these coils and then what we're going to do is put in our micro coil in the middle and slot it into the top two slots so as you see at the, at, the, at the top there, it's going to be the top two slots that we go into. Now we're not going to be using silica, which they are using here. We're going to be using cotton. And by using cotton, it means that you're guaranteed to get a good sort of push up against the uh, wicking material on the outside. Uh, so that means also the fact that cotton is so absorbent, it means that it's going to, uh, it should wick very well. Right, we'll take the, uh, take the bottom off here, which is the first thing. We take out this little pin. And if we look inside, we can see that there's a, an insulator there. And one wire is uh, coming out through the insulator and the other one to the side. So let's uh, take this out. Just take the insulator out here, like that. And then you can actually see that there are four wires there. So two that were actually going to the inside, I could only see one, two on the inside and two on the outside of that uh, little um, insulator there. So what we need to do is basically take these coils out. So looking in there, and I don't know whether I'll be able to do this in camera, what we need to do is just basically go in and gently, let's see if we can do this, take one coil out and then we need to take the other one now what might be better is if I just push if I just push the wires into the inside there because they're hooked so I don't want them to get caught and then again very gently just go in after the other coil 
and pull it out and there it is. So if we look inside now we can see right the way through it and in there we can see the little slots, the top one of which we're going to be popping our coil into and then where those slots are, that little, I don't know what it's made of, but the material that those slots are in, um, between that and the actual metal is uh, the filler material, which is going to get saturated with liquid from the side there. So I have uh, this little screwdriver. What Rip was saying was, and he's dead right, it's handy to have a little screwdriver like this rather than just a drill bit because it means you can actually push the coil up against the side here. But this is, it's about two millimeters in terms of diameter. So what we need is, here's our wire, which I have already flamed just to make it a little bit uh, less sort of bouncy. And what we want to do is uh, basically uh, eight wraps around this. Now, as ever, you usually end up sacrificing the first wrap. So um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll get uh, one around it and then we'll start counting. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's kind of what we're looking like there. And what we can do is tidy this up afterwards. Now in this case, eh, what we want is we want the legs both going in the same direction. So let's just turn this one back by one or by a half so that we have them pointing down the same way. So that's what we're looking like at the moment. Now I'll straighten the wires out shortly. Now what you can do is then just basically push that in there to the end just to make them as tight as you can. So that you end up with something like that. Okay we can take this off now. You can see it here. Now we'll be able to tidy this up a little bit. And essentially what we want to do is just pop it onto the tweezers but when you're popping it onto the tweezers, you need to make sure that you don't compress it too much. Because if you do, you end up getting overlaps at the end. And you don't want overlaps. You want to try and keep it something like that there. So what I'll do is, because these tweezers get very hot, so I'd recommend you get something a little bit better than these. Uh, what we'll do now is just flame this for a few seconds. Let's try and do it so as not to burn the camera. Where are we there? I'm not sure if you can see that there. And that should do it. So we're talking about something like that. Now this needs to cool down because remember 28 gauge or 0.32 canthal is fairly thick stuff so it takes a little while to cool down. But we end up with a little coil looking like that there. So everything nice and tight and no overlaps happening at all. Not sure if you can actually see that. Okay, so here's our little coil, looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit uh, of the excess off here. We don't need all of that, just shorten it a wee bit. Okay, and then the next thing is to put some cotton into it. Okay, I have a little bit of cotton here, made nice and small, just basically rolled up um, like that with a pointy end on it. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, thread this in to the coil like that and then just pull it through so that it looks something like that. Now what we need is as Rip says basically you know it needs to be reasonably firm in the middle there so what tends to happen with cotton is you get thicker and thinner parts so um, just put it on one of the slightly thicker parts and then what we're going to do is we're going to trim it. I'm going to trim the wick now um, what uh, Rip says is about two and a half millimeters on either side so let's this is my 
classic guesstimate, I'd say maybe something like that. And uh, do the same thing on the other side. To about there. So we end up looking with something looking like that. Now we're going to slot this into, you can see here, you can see a slot there which is sort of deeper, just at the back. And then if I turn this around you can see a slot there which is not as deep. And that's the one that we actually want to slot into, okay? Okay, now I'm going to uh, insert this in. This is kind of the, the, the dodgy part. So what you need to ha have is your leads as straight as you can so that they will actually go in and go down. And that's now gone through to the bottom. So then what we need to do is actually position this so it's going into the top slots, as I mentioned before. So what we can do is just pull that around like that and then just pull it down. So you end up with something like that. So you can see what's happening there that the cotton is going to the side and actually touching up against the filler and that's what we need to do. Right, what we now need to do is put the rubber stopper back over um, one of these legs, it doesn't matter which one, but what we need to be is very very gentle while we're doing it because we know that uh, on the inside we have uh, the coil positioned properly so it's sitting into the two slots, the two top slots. So let's uh, just see if we can gently push this in. So as I said what we'll have is one lead on the inside and one on the outside. So we end up with something like that there. Okay, position wise we still seem to be okay in there. So what the next thing to do is we're going to be putting the pin in. So what we need to do is just gently bend one of these over like that and then do the same thing on the other side there, like that. And then simply just get the pin, which by the way you can see is hollow and it's got a hole down there as well. And then what we'll do is just gently push the pin into place and that is then going to keep the leads where they are meant to be. And then we can have another check here just to make sure that nothing has moved and everything seems to be okay in there at the moment. So now all we need to do is basically cut these leads off as close as we possibly can. So let's go in here with my little scissors. There's one gone. And do the same thing with this one. And there's the other one gone there. As ever with these leads, you really want to get them as, as close as you can. So uh, I'm just going at it again with a nail clippers. Let's see if this uh, works any better for me. That's a bit better. And then the other lead is over here. And we just push down there and But it would help if I could see. Right, that's okay now. So they're sort of trimmed off nice and small. So last check here. What I might do is just position this a little bit more in the center. And to me, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now it's time to um, just stick the new coil head in that we've made. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, liquid on it. So remember, cotton needs to be wet if it's going to burn at all, because otherwise it's... Uh, so just put a couple of little drops in on that, just to sort of prime it and make sure it's nice and safe. I've got some juice in here, which is the same juice I was using uh, with the other coil, with the 1.6 coil, um, the stock head. 
So it would be interesting to see now, you know, what's the difference with this. So then this basically goes in like this. Let me screw it up. And that should be a nice and uh, snug there. Right, the moment of truth. Um, I have it on a wizard's apprentice here. And as you can see, it was at 1.7, it's just gone up to 1.8. But I mean, that's still okay. But maybe, you know, maybe my leads were a little bit longer or something than Rips. Uh, he was coming out of 1.6, uh, but 1.8, it's still fine. I'll do one wrap less next time and see what uh, see how it works out. So anyway, I've got it at 9 watts here. And 9 watts is, if you can see, 4.1 volts. And I've got it on the, let's see, what will I put it on? The second most open, so the second biggest hole. So let's see what it's like. Very nice. Really, really good flavour off it as well. Uh, so let's bang this up a little bit. Let's bang it up to say 10 watts, which is about as far as you could push the original stock coil on it. No burnt taste, tastes absolutely gorgeous. We'll do a big inhale on this one, see what happens. Plenty of vapor. So let's just push it a little bit further then. We'll push it up to uh, 14, 14 watts. And that is five volts going through this and let's just open it up to the the full big hole and we'll do a long inhale on this and see what happens brilliant no burnt taste at all off it and let's go up a bit further again shall we we'll go up to um, 16 watts so 16 watts, I'm not sure what that is. That's 5.4 volts. So we're really, really pushing it here on this one. Okay, here we go. Just starting to get a tiny, tiny bit of a burnt taste on that now. So, um, I think we'll slack it back down again, but I'd never be going that high anyway, but normally for me up around 12 would be about right. So let's uh, just get it back to 12, which is 4.7 volts. And perfect. No burnt taste at all. So that's it. It's actually pretty straightforward. Um, thanks to Rip Trippers, he produces fantastic coils. He's always working on ways of actually uh, coming up with uh, you know new coils for K funds for you know uh, for drippers for various different things. So as I said, his videos are well worth watching, and um, yeah, this is a really really good one for the Nautilus. Uh, I had said you know in my video about the Nautil Nautilus that it was a great great atomizer to have for people who didn't want to rebuild um, because it's 22 mil and sits on a 22 mil mod no problem looks very good on it in some people's opinion um, but now it turns out that you can rebuild the coils so plenty of you probably won't want to but for those who do uh, that's how you do it so um, what can I say thanks for watching thanks Rip for doing uh, the build in the first place and I'll catch you again soon cheers Cheers.